man, what, what do you do? It's clearly something's there on his neck and they checked it out. Yeah. Why would you do that? You know it's against the rules. What's up everyone and welcome back to Top 5 Central. Famous people come in all shapes and sizes. Some are movie actors, some are government officials, and some are athletes. Getting ahead in your industry is the name of the game, which is why a lot of people take shortcuts to become the best. So today we're looking at 10 athletes who got caught cheating. Now, if you like sports, drop a like on the video and comment which sport you like the most. Is it baseball, basketball, football, or what? Whichever sport has the most comments wins, but uh, anyways, let's get right into it. Number 10, Joe Negro. So here's the thing, this guy didn't just cheat, he cheated badly. Like everyone knew Joe Necro was sanding down balls with sandpaper, but no one called him out. When the umpire finally noticed, he pulled the dude aside, and that's when things got hilarious. I mean, you could see him throw the sandpaper away while emptying his pockets, but it doesn't work because everyone else sees it too. In fact, even getting caught wasn't enough to make him fess up. He just kept repeating that the board and sandpaper were for keeping his nail short. Yikes. For his second shutout of the season, Candiotti's no-hit bid was spoiled by Mike Eastler's leadoff bloop single to center field in the eighth inning. Well, the game, Candiotti struck out five and walked one. They are inspecting Phil Necro. He's out of there. He's been kicked out of the game. And Joe Necro emptied his pockets. Kicked him out of the game. And they found the foreign substance coming out of his pocket and and then out. Number nine, Michael Pineda. Now we're putting this guy in the list because he got tossed from the game, but I'll be honest, there seems to be a lot of debate about whether this counts as cheating or not. Basically, Michael Pineda got called out for having pine tar on his hands and neck, which is supposed to give a pitcher a better grip, but can also make the ball move in unpredictable ways. No one actually knows if it actually works, and even the commentators try and justify what he's doing. With that said, he did get thrown out of the game, so I'm guessing the umpire definitely had his mind made up. Now they're checking his back. By saying it's against the rules. I get Why that. Why would you have it so apparent on your neck and the other time on his hand? Well, what do you do? It's clearly something's there on his neck and they checked it out. Yeah. Why would you do that? You know it's against the rules. And you just had a major incident against this very same team and you realize they were going to be looking. It, it makes no sense to me. I mean, we yeah. talked. Number eight, Tanya Harding. Figure skating isn't exactly the most popular sport in the world, but this scandal is so big that it's even been on the big screen. Everyone knows the story. Tanya Harding and Nancy Kerrigan were rivals and the Olympics were coming up. So what happened? Tanya's husband and bodyguard teamed up to break Nancy's leg and ruin her chances of getting the gold. The thing is, it all went horribly wrong, with Nancy just getting a bruise and her winning silver in the Olympics. Both men got jail time. With that said, the real crime is that Tanya was banned from ever skating professionally again, even though she didn't know what had happened until afterwards. <laughs> Number seven, Dwight Howard. Now this is a weird one because it's hard to know if this guy didn't know the rules or if he just didn't care. I mean, the ball had to be swapped in this game when officials noticed it was covered in stickum, but they obviously didn't know which player was responsible. With that said, it didn't take long for it to come out that it was Dwight Howard and his reaction was pretty funny. Like he just straight up admitted to doing it every single game. And even though the NBA said it was illegal, he just couldn't understand why it was such a big deal. He's really a well-rounded player. In that first game, 
The Rockets had a 19 point lead early in the game and Millsap's telling them to look at the ball. Must be sticky. There's an argument going on. The officials. The officials are, are saying that stickum is illegal and the ball has stickum on it. And so they're going to have to ex exchange the ball. And the officials have warned both teams that stickum is illegal, do not use it. Well. Number six, Fernando Vicente. It's important to remember that it's not always the players who are cheating. Sometimes it's the bosses who are to blame. I mean, this Spanish boss had a winning basketball team in the Paralympics, but something just wasn't right. Basically 10 of the 12 team members weren't disabled at all, but had tons of like fake certificates saying they were intellectually handicapped. In fact, the truth only came out when their pictures were in the paper and readers who knew them said they had IQs way above 70. So the medals were returned, but still, you have to be pretty low to fake something like that just for the gold. This next bunch of characters run away with a gold medal when it comes to outrageous athletic misdemeanor and in the process brought shame upon a whole nation. We were encouraged to pretend to be stupid. October the 24th, 2000, and it's the grand final of the intellectually disabled basketball competition for players with learning difficulties. It's Russia versus Spain. However, the Spanish have a secret advantage. 10 out of the 12 of them are perfectly normal, putting it on in the hope of winning gold. Number five, Brandon Jennings. Okay, okay, so I know the players are cheating, but it's kind of funny that even the refs didn't notice at first. Basically, when a free throw was called, Jennings walked up to take it, even though he was nowhere near the play. No one noticed till after he had made the shot, and the ref only made them redo it because the other team called it out. The hilarious thing is, Jennings wasn't even mad about being caught. He just grinned and backed off, and there weren't any real consequences at all. Check this play out. Andrew Bogan draws the foul. Now notice, Brandon Jennings isn't even a part of this play. Bogan is the one who got fouled. Jennings is an 81% free throw shooter. He walks to the line. Bogan, a 59% free throw shooter, he walks underneath. The Bucks are trying to pull a fast one. Nobody notices, including the ref. He gives Jennings the ball. Jennings shoots the free throw and makes it. And then people start to figure out, like, hey, wait a minute, man. <laughs> he wasn't even involved. And Jennings like, what did I do? Number four, Sal Alosi. I've already said that it's not always just players in the wrong, and this is another case of the coach causing bad behavior. Apparently, the coach told five members of the Jets to form a human wall on the sidelines, just to influence where the Dolphins gunner would go. Once he was right where he wanted him, the coach straight up tripped the gunner and sent him sprawling on his face. The thing is, even once the plan came out, nobody could actually decide for certain which parts broke the rules and which didn't. In fact, people still can't agree, so feel free to fight it out in the comments. He is on the Jets' sideline. Boy, it looked like he got tripped by one of the uh, members of the Jets' staff. Well, this is just uncalled for in the NFL. Watch the knee here being stuck out on purpose to trip up Nolan Carroll. Not sure who that person is, but they should be ashamed of themselves for that type of action. That has no place in any athletic event. Number three, Ryan Mattis. Now it's obvious from this list that certain kind of cheats happen more than others, because this is the second baseball clip that ends with someone being thrown off for pine tar. Well, I guess that's not exactly true because they didn't say it was pine tar, but either way, pitcher Mattis was removed for having a quote unquote foreign substance on his arm. The crazy thing is, this happened less than a year after Pinedo was removed for the same thing, and just a week after another player was caught doing it too. So uh, yeah, it looks like the MLB definitely has a reoccurring problem. It's going to be an awkward conversation. He's been thrown out of the game. Brian Mattis becomes the second big league pitcher this week to get thrown out of a game for a foreign substance on his arm. 
Matt is thrown out in a scoreless game in the 12th. Number two, Renault F1 team. Now it's one thing to cheat when the only thing in danger is your team's reputation, but this time there was way more at stake. Basically the 2008 Grand Prix was fixed by Renault and the way they did it put their own drivers, the other drivers, and even the audience in danger. So what'd they do? Well, they asked one of their drivers to crash on purpose right at the start of the race, which allowed the other driver on that team to get to the front. He eventually won the race, and even though Renault admitted cheating and were put on suspension for two years, he still got to keep the title. I mean, wow, looks like cheating actually pays off. <laughs> what? Nelson Piquet crashed on purpose so as to bring out the safety car. This wasn't spying on other teams or lying to the stewards. This was endangering spectators, marshals, and his own safety. The only debate is whether the plan to crash deliberately was Piquet's idea or Pat Simmons. Each one blames the other, so someone is still not telling the truth. Nelson Piquet's actions allow teammate Fernando Alonso to reach the front and win the race. Number 1. Boston Marathon Cheater now the funny thing is, this seems like a super obvious way to cheat that would never work, but this woman basically got away with it twice. I mean a year before this clip, she cheated by getting a subway to the marathon finish line, and then in 1980, she cheated again. She was uncovered pretty quickly after that, and her mistake was coming in first. Like all she did was run out from the crowd about a half a mile from the finish line, and when the media told her it could be a new American record, it was pretty obvious she wasn't a real runner at all. Oops. No one is sure how she did it, but this unknown runner came out of nowhere ahead of all the other women. I just saw someone stumble out of the crowd uh, in front of me across the street. This was on Commonwealth Ave, probably about a half day off. What nobody knew yet was that six months before, Rosie allegedly took a subway to the finish line of the New York Marathon. So this was actually her second ruse, and she almost pulled it off. Her big mistake was coming in first, the media rushed to her side, but soon it became apparent that she was a not-so-great imposter. We're here with the women's winner. She's getting a case of the sneezes. Rosie, Rosie Ruiz. Okay. I'm sorry. Rosie Ruiz, the women's winner in the Boston Marathon today with a time of 2.31 and change. Now, we don't know how many seconds that is. It may be a new American record. And there's our video on the top 10 athletes who got caught cheating. If you enjoyed the video and you want to see a part two, make sure to click the like button and subscribe so you never miss another video. We do all types of top fives and top tens, but we're always open to suggestions. So if you guys want to see a video, make sure to leave it down in the comments below. But anyways, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video.